Fantastic Four number 46. Oh. <laughs> Reed Richards finally meets his match. Written by Dan Slott. Well, Dan Slott just shits all over Marvel. And they are like, they they smile and say, give me more, baby. Is this an Ulta universe? No, this is it. Because remember he met his like Nathaniel Richards and all that stuff through the multiverse. And this is his yeah. sister through her. Uh, okay, Reed Richards meets his half sister in the previews of Fantastic Four number 46. Thanks to the knowledge of the Watchers, the lost daughter of Nathaniel Richards has been found. It's time to finally meet the mysterious sister of Reed Richards. But is it time to welcome her into the family? This is Reed Richards' sister. This is where I wanted to bring up Captain Marvel because as soon as I saw her, I thought of Monica Rambeau. Same hairstyle? Well, no. Let me get. Uh, let me finish, and then uh, we'll jump on. Okay. I did a video. Please go check it out. All you gotta do is type in Monica Rambo when you get to my page. And uh, I did this video, one of the most popular on the channel, where I talk about the racist, the racist treatment of Monica Rambo by Marvel Comics. And one of the things I mentioned is how Monica Rambo has been whitened up. If you look at her very first appearance. She's mm -hmm. got her early 80s Pam Greer yep. hairstyle. She has drawn dark. She is a black woman. But over the years, she'd been... Same as Storm, by the way. Look, go look at what Storm used to look like, except for, of course, she had the white hair. The last image I saw of Monica Rambeau, I'm sure there's new ones since because of the movie. It was literally just a brown Greg Land tracing. Here's what Monica Rambeau should look like. Who, who do they draw as the dark-skinned black woman? The woman who's half white. Just saying. Uh, nothing wrong with it. So Reed Richards shows up. Right. This is the guy from the Fantastic Four. She's nonplussed. He's he's a celebrity. He's big, and she's just like, yeah, okay, whatever. Professor Joanne Jeffers, world-renowned Echo warrior, marine biologist. I'm a huge fan. I'm Reed Richards. I think it's time we met. And she goes, uh, I'm the son of Nathaniel Richards and leader of the Fantastic Four. But there's more to it. You see, I'm my half brother. I was wondering when you'd show up. And he says, Well, I only learned that recently. If you have some time, I was hoping uh, we could go somewhere to talk. She goes, I could give you four hours. Once again. The brother she just met that's going to be very important in just a couple of panels he says professor jeffers allow me to introduce you to sue my wife and sue says joanna it's so nice to finally meet you for months we've only seen you as part of a holographic image and you waited months to look me up you you freaking conceited bitch uh, i mean they're off saving Seriously. the world and uh, well, dimension well, no, no, she well, hold on just a sec she <laughs> literally said before Reed Richards did that he was her half brother. Did she ever look him up? She knows where he yeah, is yeah, you know, a lot better starting. than he knows where <laughs> she is because they're the Fantastic Four in that big ass Baxter building in the middle of New York. Sue looks all worried. Well, the first free second we had there were alien invasions, clones. We had to save the multiverse. No, it's go back to your seafood freaking restaurant. Me and Reed are fine without you. Bye. Now, the, the reason why I wanted to bring this up also is that uh, one of the things a lot of people are saying about it. Oh, and they wrote her more intelligent than Reed Richards, which let's face it, every freaking character in the Marvel Universe is now more intelligent than Reed Richards. Well, except for, except for Tony Stark. It is. Yeah, right. Yeah, because he's, <laughs> he's right there at the retard table. This isn't the first time they've had like people pop up, like even mm -hmm. his dad popping up back in the back in the day, of, in the, I think it was in the 90s or late 80s. All I look at is this part is that the reason they uh, slow did this because he's leaving the book yeah so he basically wants to leave a mess for the next person but and the worst of it is that she knew who she was and then chastised reed and sue for not coming and finding her it's ridiculously it's horribly bad writing on dan slot's part i know dan slot can write these i want to now go check out the i know you're doing it over at geeky puppet Show. yeah the Dan Slott writing in, in She-Hulk because I really like that, but do I anymore? It's like the Tom King thing. I, I don't know. Maybe Dan Slott was never good. I've only read two issues by Tom King. I read one issue of Rorschach or whatever it's called. Rorschach. Yeah, Rorschach. And then I read two issues of his Batman run and I noped out on all of them. Then again, maybe there is a good book. My opinion on, on, on Dan Sott being a, a good writer, a bad writer, this sounds very bad. This sounds like he just kind of just decided like, oh crap, you know what? I don't want to get canceled, so I better uh, say something because I, I forgot to do it, you know, virtue signal. Yeah, I mean, I can't say, I can't trash him for being a crappy writer, but I will say he's a shitty person. Oh, that's, Dan Slott? That's, that's the thing for Dan Slott. He's a shitty person, but if this does look bad. Well, I you know, obviously... Through Jimmy Quirks, something happened with me. Uh, Captain Frugal, by the yeah. way, has experience with Dan Slott being a crappy human. Uh, he really is not a good guy. He really isn't. Um, even to defend somebody else who I don't have, there's no love lost between the two of us. Dan Slott went on to Ethan Van Skyver's channel to do an interview. 
the interview went fine. I watched it. And then the day after, or two days after, he asked Ethan to take it off because he realized, ooh, his fans are toxic and all that kind of crap. Um, so Dan Slott has never actually been a decent fellow. <laughs> if you give a diversity character to a person who belongs to their group, yeah, I'm, I'm... they're written incredibly poor. It's like they're, they're almost afraid to uh, to challenge the character. Oh, well, yeah, they gave Megs the gay characters and all. It's like, what? It's, it's like how how this blatantly rude is that it's like oh you're in a wheelchair you can only write wheelchair characters from now on it's or, or you're gay you can only write gay characters let, let the straight guys write the straight guys and it's like no if One someone i don't care i don't care if you're gay straight or wheelchair or not if you can write better than the other person you're gonna get that that's how you get the job but unfortunately that's not how marvel and dc work anymore 